Welcome to the Hiring and Empowering Solutions podcast. This podcast is dedicated to providing the key ingredients to transform your employees into a dream team, creating consistent results in every aspect of your business, including your people, your process, and your profits. Your team empowerment, leadership, business development, communication, hiring, and firing. As some of the country's leading staffing and management consultants, we help business owners, i.e. entrepreneurs, and the team that support them, what we call intrapreneurs, to powerfully connect and work together to grow the business. Welcome to today's episode. My name is Molly McGrath, and I am so excited about today's guest, Mark Cerniglia, co-founder of Spotlight Branding. And why I'm so excited about Mark is Mark and I have a mutual client that I was supporting with uh, the hiring process a couple months ago. And through the process of working with this client, they had launched a brand new website, a brand new newsletter. I got added to the list and I will never forget the first newsletter that I got. The subject line just uh, stopped me in my, in, in my shoes. And I I didn't see the name that it was coming from one of our mutual clients, but I did see the subject line and immediately opened it. And many of you get bombarded with email, with newsletters, with the tremendous amount of information in this day and age. And you know, there really needs to be a significant subject line to stop you to actually not only open, but click through the newsletter to learn more, any piece of content that you get. And after I saw it, um, being me, that I'm always deeply curious about, okay, who is the creator of this? I need to know more about this organization. Immediately uh, clicked through, found Spotlight Branding, and and sent an email to Mark and his organization and said, I think we need to talk. You all are working in the marketing and branding with small solo law firms. I've been working in this industry for 20 plus years. How in the world have we not met? And it was just fascinating when Mark and I uh, hopped on a call. uh, We were both just cutting each other off. And and I remember several times we were like, exactly, exactly. And it was just so refreshing to meet somebody who I felt like um, thought the same way that we do as an organization, understands the challenges and the needs of attorneys, understands uh, very much about what it means to get their phone to ring to generate qualified leads. And um, doing marketing in a very holistic, authentic way, which is, as many of you know, you've probably been with many, many different marketing organizations. And what was refreshing for me when I met Mark is that we had some mutual clients They're a huge, huge sponsor of How to Manage a Small Law Firm, which is one of our greatest referral sources and our favorite attorneys to work with. So I immediately said, you've got to get on our podcast. So today we are going to be talking, Mark's going to be sharing with us um, the concept of what we came up with is a better way to legal marketing. Not all newsletters, social media, and SEO is created equal. And Mark, I'm just so excited to have you here today. So thank you for joining us. Yeah, you bet. I was already excited, but that introduction just got me even more fired up. <laughs> well, great. As you and I typically do, let's just dive in the deep end and, and let's just hit it. And so let talk to us a little bit about this whole idea of there is a better way. I think that um, I would just love for you to speak into that for us today. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I, I think, you know, the idea of, uh, the, you know, we really believe that we kind of have a better way, a better approach to things. And it, and it's it's founded in a couple of things. You know, first of all, it's founded in the fact that, um, you know, the legal space is very crowded. There's a lot of competition for lawyers out there. And so I think, you know, every every law firm understands the need to figure out how to kind of rise above their competition and, and attract the, the kinds of clients they want and get more business and ultimately build the practice they want. But there's really, you know, there's... Um, I don't really think a lot of marketing companies do a good job in really helping them figure out how to do that. Um, you know, and so the challenge for a lot of law firms is figuring out how to do that. I, I think also the challenge for a lot of law firms, and unfortunately most of them don't realize this, is that they're actually leaving a lot of, of money on the table already. You know, we'll talk more about this in the episode, but um, just to kind of, you know, give you some highlights of what's to come, you know, uh, a lot of law firms are not actually tapping into referrals as much as they could be. 
and their data might be telling them one thing, but I, I'll, I'll talk later about why I think their data is actually wrong when it comes to their referrals. Um, they're, they're really not building their reputation and their brand online as good as they could be. And that affects their ability to really track quality clients, command the rates they want to charge. Um, you know, and, I, and I think the, the biggest culprit in a lot of this, and this is where this whole better way concept really comes full circle, is I really believe there's an over-focus on search engines um, today for law firms and really a lot of professions. And this is something else I'm sure we'll talk about. But again, the short version is just that uh, search engines are very competitive. There's very few spaces to succeed when you think about how many other lawyers in your city do what you do. And you all are competing for that same you know, real estate at the top of search engines. And, um, and everyone's chasing this holy grail. And the truth is most fail, very few succeed, a lot waste a lot of money doing it. And, um, but every marketing company out there is pitching search engines and how important it is. And they roll it into every service they offer. And most lawyers just buy it because they, they think that they need to be really concerned about search engines. And, and uh, what that often does is it takes the focus off of some of the other things they could be doing to succeed. Um, especially that address what I talked about a second ago with building a better reputation, generating more referrals from your existing network. So the better way is this to kind of sum it up for you. The better way is really um, taking the focus off of search engines and really focusing your marketing more on your network and marketing to people and not you know search engine robots and really building your reputation, building a strong brand and doing everything you can to constantly stay top of mind with people. Um, you know, so, so that is the better way at a 10,000 foot view. Um, and I think that what I've seen is that most law firms are really chasing search engines, chasing the low hanging fruit, um, and really aren't as focused as they could be on more referrals, better reputation, um, and really kind of separating themselves from the competition. So I hope, uh, I hope, I hope that set it up nicely. I hope, I hope, uh, your audience connected with some of that. Wow. Yeah, I I can tell you when I'm on the phone with law firms, that's the number one thing that I I hear from them is that we're not showing up on the first half of the fold through the Google ranking, what have you. And I think because attorneys are so busy with and and so brilliant in their genius zone is counseling clients and meeting with clients and service driven, et cetera, that when it comes to marketing, they traditionally don't have the time, don't know what to do. And when they're getting henpecked in their email, I I actually got an email this morning from someone through LinkedIn that is in the Denver area that says, hey, we should meet for coffee and talk about your SEO. And, you know, I I did a research (laughs) and you're not ranking anywhere, which basically tell, you know, they, they have this fear tactic of if you're not showing up, then you might as well just close up shop and go get a job. And it's just fascinating. <laughs> right. <laughs> Many times, and myself included, you know, you see that you're like, oh, oh my gosh, like they're so right. Here's a check. Here's a credit card. Just, d- d- yes, make it work, make it work. And a lot of times when it comes to marketing, it, especially I hear this from attorneys all the time, it's, it's like voodoo. You, they use all these, these very high powered terminology, SEO, SMO, uh, search engine, ranking, click through rate, all these different terminologies, which is, like I said, it's Chinese for many attorneys. And they say, well, I don't understand what you're saying. And because I don't understand what you're saying, I need to pay you to fix it because I obviously am doing something wrong. No, for sure. And it's unfortunate because, I mean, to just put it very bluntly to everyone who's listening, like you can have a very successful practice without ever really accomplishing much on search engines. It's just, and people are like, really? How's that so? And it's, it's, the funny thing is I want to respond back and be like, how is it not? I mean, are search engines really the only way to get clients? Like, Like, first of all, if that was true, like even if that was true, then very few law firms would get clients because most people aren't really going past the first couple of results in a, in a search, you mm-hmm. know? So like, like you, you couldn't have, um, you know, dozens of, of lawyers in the same practice area, let alone in most major cities, hundreds of lawyers in the same practice area, because they would all just go out of business. Right. Um, but, but, but from, you know, but from a more specific standpoint also, I mean, um, referrals are still King. Um, there's other places to market and advertise, all of these SEO companies 
want to throw data at you telling you how everyone's going to search engines now and you, you have to be there. And you know why people go to search engines? They go there as a last resort. Nobody wants to find a significant need on a search engine. Mm. Like, especially when it's, when it's um, something that is significant to your life, right? Like, um, I, I kind of put legal up there with like medical and financial. Like nobody wants to find their doctor through a search engine or wants to find their financial advisor or accountant through a search engine or find their lawyer through a search engine. Like, like I'll do it if I have to, but I would rather be referred or I would rather, I'd rather, I honestly would rather even see some advertising through some sort of trusted third party that I watch their content or read their content, right? Because at least there's some sort of, you know, trust that just comes with, okay, you know, I, I watch this channel or I read this content and, you know, I, I connect with them. And so hopefully whoever they do advertising with, you know, there's, there's a connection there. The, 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 the point is, is that referral is still king. There's other ways to advertise. Um, search engine is a last resort, you know? Um, and, and, and even, even if it wasn't all true, even if that wasn't the case and search engines were everything, well then good luck because only about three law firms in every practice area would succeed. Wow. I, I, I'm just sitting here thinking of uh, my top 10 clients that I'm work, actively, actively working with right now. And you're really just blowing my mind here and shifting it truly and even for my own business in such a way, because it's absolutely true. You, I think of if so I get referred to an attorney, a doctor, what have you, the, what I do is I will Google search their name or their company name or their website if I have a direct link to their website. And by and large, I'm going to spend maybe a minute or so there. And I just want to get proof of concept. I just want to see, okay, they're legit. They look professional. They're active. They have some great resources and content here. And in less than a minute, I'm making my decision if I want to pick up the phone and move forward with communicating and connecting with them and or possibly even hiring them. And I think what I'm hearing from you is, it, wow, it just you can connect in various different ways, uh, advertising in mediums or uh, speaking engagements or writing opportunities. And I think a lot of times we hide out behind technology when you're in the personal service industry versus building those referral sources, finding a way to leverage them, being in their newsletter, being featured on the, being on their podcast, whatever it might be, and spending your dollars and money or your money and time in those arenas versus throwing it at SEO. You'll get a better bang for your buck. Not only that, but nothing um, will send you more referrals in business versus more greater than third-party credibility, right? Oh, a hundred percent. And when you think about that, you know, that's exactly what a, a referral is, right? Is, is you're, you're, you're kind of trusting somebody else's suggestion. And, and I think you said something there that was really valuable as well about maybe when you're looking up a specific person in a search, right? Cause you know, cause it's important that I think everyone out there understands that we're not talking when we talk about like SEO and, you know, spending money on SEO, we're not talking about somebody finding you when they search your name. Like you shouldn't have to spend money so that when somebody types in your name, they find you. Mm. Um, that's, you know, we're, we're talking about when somebody types in, you know, I'm in Charlotte right now, right? So if somebody types in Charlotte family lawyer, or Charlotte divorce lawyer, or Charlotte, you know, business attorney, you know? Um, but but, but here, here's what's interesting about what you were just saying a second ago is when people see the internet still matters. Like the internet still matters separate from search engines, right? Cause I'm, we're also not preaching a message of, you know, forget about the internet. No, we're just saying, realize that search engines aren't as critical as you think, but your website still matters. Your content still matters. Uh, your social media presence still matters because, and this is where I want to go back to what you just said. When people do look you up because they're going to look you up, even if they were referred to you, they're going to look you up they're going to visit your website. They're going to check out your social media presence if you have one. If you have an email newsletter, they might even sign up for it. If you have blogs or videos, they'll probably skim those real quick because that's the day and age we live in. People will skim a blog. They'll watch a video or two. Um, but so here's where it all comes full circle. I mentioned earlier this idea of focusing on people and not search engines. Well, if all of this content 
was created around what search engines want, the person that arrives at your website isn't going to have as rich of an experience because it was really a website experience designed for what search engines want, right? And when you're really focused on, on creating content that connects with people, you're going to find that when those people look you up exactly like you just said, they're going to have a better experience because the content is created to connect with them and it's meant to reinforce your expertise and why they should call you. You know, and um, and it's just I, I, shifting that focus is really important, right? You know, creating content that connects with people, and and really kind of letting go of this this gospel of search engines. Wow. Yes. It, 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 and and when I and how I got connected to you was actually through um, a website that I like. I said I was on the newsletter, and when I clicked through and I went there, and then I eventually went to their website. I was just blown away at the way you had, um, and I think it's okay for me to even announce here, it's the probatefirm.com, the probate law firm. And I, I just really highly recommend that you all just check that, check that out for really to solidify and to bring the visual into what we're speaking about here, because it is vibrant, it is alive, it communicates that um, we're the professionals and it is so clean and simplistic. But not only that, when you look at the blog content in, in particular and look at some of the content on there, it is just power-packed uh, sucker punch, if you will, into the belly of exactly what I see is when I saw some of the subject lines, it was speaking right into the client's listening. Like it was almost verbatim, their words that they would use, how they would think, how they would interact. And the reason that I bring this up in, in particular is because it is, as you say, it's about the content at the end of the day. And search engine doesn't really it doesn't matter. I never even really thought of it that way, Mark. That is just so fascinating. So talk to us a little bit about, okay, great. I'm bought in about this whole thing around um, SEO and referral sources and value-packed, rich content. Can you talk to us about the benefits to the attorneys that are listening here today? What is the right way and how to start yeah. doing things the right, better way? Yeah, no, no, I appreciate that. So I'll mention real quick before we kind of transition to that, that, that if anyone out there kind of just wants more information on this kind of idea of, of SEO not being everything you thought it was, um, or, or you just need some more convincing, um, we did put together a, a special report for your listeners. Uh, we even have a, a page just for them. Um, so if they go to spotlightbranding.com slash Molly, um, uh, so, uh, and, and they'll, uh, they'll be able to get access to our anti-SEO report um, it's a quick read, but it's got some data in there. It really touches on some of the, the downsides of focusing on search engines. Um, and uh, it also kind of lists um, some things we suggest instead, which we're certainly going to talk about here in a second. But uh, if anybody wants that report, just check out spotlightbrain.com slash Molly, and uh, you can uh, go ahead and download that. Oh, great. Um, Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah, you bet. And I think you'll probably put that in the show notes. So I think people can grab it there too. Yep, absolutely. Um, so, so, so you hit the nail on the head. So the, the key is, okay, first, we, we got to get your focus off of what's, what's, in our opinion, the wrong place, because it really tends to serve as a distraction. Um, and so when we take our focus off of search engines, where do we put it? And we really think it's in reputation and referrals, the two R's, if you will. Um, you know, the more you can build your reputation and build credibility, the more you're going to stand out from the crowd and more you're going to be able to command higher rates. And um, there's a lot of ways you can do that, specifically the ways that I'm familiar with because I'm an internet marketing guy is, is on the internet, you know, so through content, uh, through having resources on your website, having free downloads, having a blog that you, you publish an article at least once a month with some practical advice or guidance to your audience about the kind of legal questions they have. Doing the same thing in video, provide video FAQs, have a social media presence where you share these blogs and these videos and these resources. Um, because I think one of the best ways to position yourself as an expert in something is to be a resource to your audience. And in the internet world, being a resource is here's a free download, here are blogs, here are videos, here's my social media presence. And all of that goes a really long way in kind of rising you above your competition in positioning you as an expert at what you do. I am blown away. And Molly, I'm, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. 
Um, and I mentioned referrals and we'll get to that in a minute, but let's talk about reputation. I, I am constantly surprised how many attorneys don't understand how even just their website doesn't really make them look that impressive. <laughs> and they, I think they just don't understand, they just don't understand that like that matters to people and it's subconscious, right? Like I go to your website and like, it's both the content and it's the aesthetic. It's both. It's not one or the other. It's both, you know? And, and I just love to get your thoughts on that because it's amazing how often they think, Oh, I think my website's decent. Well, do you think that your legal offerings are just decent? You know, like, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, you should feel like your website's great. Wow. You feel it, like your, your website should, yeah, you know? Yeah, it's, it, it's your walking bio. It's your walking business card. It communicates exactly. And it's interesting to hear you say that they feel like, I, I hear, I guess it's a 50-50 split. Either they spend $20,000 on this website, I don't know, 10 Ouch. years. 10 years ago when, when, you know, 10, 15 years ago, they put their blood, sweat and tears. They were responsible for writing all this award winning content and just all these legalese, et cetera. And they're white knuckling this website that is irrelevant. And because, as you know, it is, I I would say that was probably uh, right up there with getting a tooth pulled of how fun it is to write content for a website. I mean, it's it's painful. It's a lot to put your your words and who you are, what you stand for, your values, your mission, vision, all in writing and publish it and hit publish and put it out to the world. And that's what I love about what you all do is is really being able to interview and get the essence of what the law firm is about, who they are, what makes them unique, and then being able to take that and inter- I love your your whole process of it's more of an interview and then you do your magic with the copywriting and with the integration and with bringing all the pieces together to be able to publish it and put it out on stage. So I hear one thing of, I did this and I put so much time, energy and money into it. I, don't, I can't go through this process again. Or they believe that it is just so, they're so connected to the content and the words that they put, but it's not interactive. It's not active. There's no resources. There's no blog. There's no video. There's nothing of that nature. And I think that the biggest reason that attorneys stay stuck in that is because they don't want to go through the process again, because it's not their unique ability. Their unique ability is counseling humans and to build relationships and to be able to service people. And so being able to connect with someone like you, and truly, I'm not trying to over promote you. That's not the premises. And I want to be very, very clear about that because I've been through that process. We've, we've built our, redone our website two, three, five times. And every time I do it, I know that it's got a pretty short shelf life especially in this day and age, meaning that it needs to be video wasn't popular that that I know of, you know, five years ago as it irrelevant as it is today. So I love what you're saying because it it is the website and 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 I think they get so attached to the SEO or the Google AdWords or what have you that right. it is well, then that's just going to generate leads. Yeah, that's great if you throw all this money at Google AdWords and SEO, but then when they show up in your driveway, so to speak, it's a shack. <laughs> They're not walking <laughs> in, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, 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 time after time, I, I, I talk to someone who's doing like Google ads or something and I go look at their website and I just I have to say, you know, if somebody's visiting three or four other websites from other Google ads, like how, how do you really feel like your stacks up? You know, I, so I think that's important, you know, and I think, uh, I think everything you just shared really kind of alludes to our overarching topic today of not all websites, blogs, et cetera, are created equal. And, and I think that to, to really drive home, one of the examples of that is, is, uh, you know, when it comes to your website, um, and I, you know, I, I'm not trying to plug spotlight branding necessarily in, in this conversation, but I, I, I want to tell people how we do it, not because they have to hire us. So that whoever they work with, or if they do it themselves, they at least know the approach. But like one of the examples of how all websites aren't created equal is, 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 you know, it, it starts with when you create your content and, and you create your design and you create your entire website strategy, what are you focused on? Are you focused on search engines? Or are you focused on people? If you're focused on people, that affects the strategy. And then from there, you start thinking about, okay, let's find the right balance between, um, 
content and design, right? I see some websites that are too design heavy. They're aesthetically great, but the truth is if I'm actually there because I have a legal issue, uh, there's not really content that compels me to either move forward or maybe at the very least makes me feel like this lawyer really can help me, right? So the flip side is you can also, you can have blogs and resources and videos and all of that, but if it's not all put together in an aesthetically pleasing way, you, you can't, your website looks outdated even though the, the tools are good. And so, frankly, a lot of companies just don't do a good job balancing that. You know, and I, I'm not, I'm not trying, I didn't come on here to bash other companies, but they just don't. Why? Because they're not, they're not thinking about either of those two things. They're thinking about search engines. Like they're literally thinking about how do I build a website that does well on search engines, which unfortunately 99% of the time doesn't even really do that well on search engines. But we're over here thinking about the user experience. So we're saying, okay, we need to make sure that when someone gets here that they're impressed visually, but that they can easily get to the right place. There's resources that reinforce your expertise, you know, and to your point of content, frankly, that's why we write content for our clients. We're one of the few companies that actually writes not only the blog content, but even the website content for our clients, because oftentimes it's just not really approached the right way. And so we do get to know our clients. We do get to know what they're all about, who their target audience is, but then we go ahead and try to write the content in a way that's going to really, you know, connect with their audience. So that's, we could do this all day for every, you know, blogs, newsletters, social media, but you know, it, it's, it's amazing how on the surface it might, you might think, oh, well, this company provides websites and so does this one all that matters is price. And it's like, no, strategy matters. Philosophy matters. You know, and it's amazing how many times you don't ask your vendors, well, what's your philosophy behind marketing? What's your strategy in marketing, right? We just want to see examples and know the cost. Exactly. You know, and, and it's that's, always and that's about the cost. <laughs> yeah, that's a, you know, as you were talking, a few things came to me. Um, Number one, I'll, I'll just say this and I'll even speak from my perspective as being a business owner and uh, in the digital world and dealing with websites and SEO and all the modalities that we just spoke of. A lot of times it's so easy when this one I hear often also from my attorney clients is that when I say, okay, talk to me a little bit about what you're doing to get the phone to ring. What are you getting to generate qualified leads? And a lot of times they'll say, I'll say, tell me about your social presence and what you're doing in that regard. Oh, we hired someone for social media. Oh, we've had a website up and our website doesn't generate leads or we did social media forever. And everybody, the, the measuring stick is always leads. And I think that's why we gravitate. And I, I'll call myself out too. I've done it before for SEO and Google AdWords and Facebook ads and other stuff that, okay, the phone's not ringing enough, so I'm just going to throw a check at this. And it's very easy <laughs> to turn that off if it's not generating leads, right? You're like, okay, I we've been doing this for 60 days, not generating leads. And I think people do that approach. They measure everything in regards to leads and money and calendar appointments, et cetera. And I hear people do that with the digital space where they say, I'm not blogging anymore. I'm not doing social media anymore. I'm not doing a newsletter. We never got quote unquote any business from it. And what I love right. hearing from you, what you're saying is that people are always silently watching you, your referral sources. So when you make a connection with a, a referral source and you plug them into your holistic branding and your whole picture branding, like you're saying, your blog, your newsletter, your social media, uh, things of that nature, your free downloads, and they start to see the consistency and they start to see the full branding is that everything is attached and it's integrated it communicates to them that you're a professional, that you're consistent, that you're stable, that you're solid, that you're invested, that you're aware, that you're in the game. And I think so often that we just say, well, I'm not getting any leads, so screw it. I'm not doing it anymore, what have you. And what I'm really, 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 it's driving home for me, because I'll give you an example. Right before this podcast, even today, I had a call with someone. They said, I absolutely love your podcast. I'm listening to them. And I love that that topic on X. Or I'll have people say to me, 
oh, that blog that you wrote about blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what? You read that? Why the hell didn't you pick up the phone and call me and hire me? Like, you know, you're thinking, you always just want that immediate gratification. Every time I hear somebody give me a compliment or reference or comment on a piece of content that I have out there, I can't tell you how I say I, there, this absolutely positively has to keep going and it has to stay consistent because people are constantly, silently watching you. And it, it brings me to this point. There's a book called Get, Get More Clients Now. And it, I, 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 this is a thing that stands out that I read that book probably 15 years ago. And there's a study in there from 1823 on marketing. And it talks about that people need to see things 20 times. So this is from 1823. People need to see things 20 times before they hire you. It's touch number 12 that they say, oh, wait, I should start paying attention to this guy or gal. I've seen this before. What do they do again? Exactly. Well, I know. I mean, I, I think what you're really getting at, just kind of use some marketing terms. And I think if your audience doesn't understand these terms, I think it's good we educate them real quick. We're really talking about the difference between top of funnel and kind of middle of the funnel, right? So if, if your marketing is a funnel and so every, you know things come in the top and then you're trying to funnel them down into actually calling you or having a consultation, top of funnel is the lead creation. So you go out and you run some Google ads, that's top of funnel. You go to a networking event, hoping to get referrals or new clients, that, that's top of funnel. Lead generation is top of funnel, but you have to understand that not all marketing is top of funnel. Not all The job of all marketing is not lead generation. The mm -hmm. job of some marketing is sometimes lead nurturing, taking the contacts and the networks you already do have and moving them further along the line. And I love that you pointed out the comment that people make sometimes about, well, my website doesn't generate any leads. Your website will never generate leads because your website is not a top of funnel tool. It's a middle of the funnel tool. That's like saying a brochure doesn't create any leads for me. A brochure, a brochure needs to be somehow put in somebody's hand. Like, like, like you know, how, how, how somebody finds your website is top of funnel. You could do an advertisement on the radio that sends people to your website. The radio had the job of creating the leads. The website was just in the middle of the funnel tool that moves them forward, right? So, you know, and same thing with social media. Social media sometimes can act as a top of the funnel marketing tool. There are things you could do to try to create leads through social media. But I think most of the time, the main role of social media needs to be middle of the funnel. It needs to be something that helps you stay in touch with your existing network and helps move them closer to either becoming a client or probably more importantly, being a referral source for you. Because one of the big ways of doing marketing the better way, as we're trying to talk about today, is really making sure you have marketing in place that keeps you top of mind and keeps you in touch with people. And that's middle of the funnel as well. Middle of the funnel is not only moving people closer to becoming clients, but it's also making sure they become and or stay a consistent referral source. So things like social media, blogging, um, an email newsletter. An email newsletter is going to your existing list, right? You know, you would never look at your email newsletter and go, well, it hasn't created any leads for me. Well, it's going to your existing list, you know? And it's not like anyone's going to call you and say, hey, um, I wouldn't have called you if it wasn't for the fact you sent me your email newsletter, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> you know? And so there are inherently parts of your marketing that it is harder to track the ROI on. You know, and it's unfortunate because you're right. A lot of times people kind of just throw them out because they say, well, I tried social media. I tried my website. I tried an email newsletter. It didn't create any clients, right? And that, that's a, that is a misunderstanding of how to track the results from that. It's a misunderstanding of the job that it plays. But I also want to add this real quick. It also might be that the person you had executing it for you didn't have the right strategy. Because I can tell you right now that you, it's not that you just need to start sending an new email newsletter tomorrow, but it, the, the content you put in there matters. Um, you know, fo fo focus on reminding people what you do, not providing cookie recipes and tips for a summer vacation. You know, <laughs> um, you know I, I just, I see, I, I could go all day long. We could have a separate podcast episode about kind of the right and wrong, wrong way to do social media, the right and wrong, wrong way to do blogs, the right and wrong way to do uh, email newsletters because strategy really matters. Um, but, but it does, 
it does start with understanding the role that those things need to play in your marketing. And if you understand that, here's the cool thing. If you understand the job of an email newsletter, that then informs what the strategy should be. The job of an email newsletter is middle of the funnel is to help encourage people to either work with you or refer to you, then your email newsletter needs to do that. Your email newsletter needs to remind people what you do, encourage them that you are an expert at what you do. And so all of a sudden, that now affects what the content of an email newsletter should be. And that goes across the board when we talk about blogging or your website or content as well. So if you understand it's middle of the funnel, you understand what job it needs to do, then you can also really decide what the strategy behind it you know, should be. Wow. You know, there's a few things that are popping up for me right now in um, terminology and language that you have used several times here that speaks directly into the way that I coach my clients. And it's reputation, referral, relationship, and nurturing are words that I've written down here several, several times that you've used. And I think that's what I say to attorneys a lot of times. When you use the word marketing, they cringe. Um, either because they've had a horrible experience or they've had a mediocre experience or they're paralyzed and have done nothing because they're deathly afraid of the Bar Association. And so I always say, okay, great. Let's shift this a little bit. All right, you're not great at marketing. Got it. Are you great at relationships? Are you wonderful with your referral sources? You're wonder. You're a natural nurturer because you're a counselor first and foremost versus an attorney. And when you use terminology like that, they're like, "Yes, yes." They they. I'm like, spit out the past five things that your clients have said to you when they've walked into your conference room. Like, that's a subject line. That's a marketing strategy. That's a that right there is an ebook download that we can create. You just need somebody to interview to get the words out of you, and then then be able to take it and plug it into a strategy to use your terminology and to be able to deploy it, just get it put on the bus and put at the proper exits that it needs to go on. And what I love about what you do is what got me very, what got me to you actually, Mark, was your content creation and the words that you use. Because you it is about strategy, yes, but I also think it's about the, the language that you use in a way that does communicate relationship, nurture, reputation, mm. and referral, which those really stick out for me. Because I will tell you something, and anyone listening to this that has ever worked with me knows that I am a lunatic about tracking measurement, key performance indicators. If you've ever worked with me, I'm like, do not get on the phone without giving me a report. Even if it's the crappiest version, I want to see what data you have out of your database. And it's amazing when we look at the initial contacts, where they came from, et cetera. And when I get people rolling and when they get on my coaching calls, they have to send me their reporting every week. And it's amazing. The average, once we start getting the tracking, accurate and on board because it's funny though. This is, I look at the reporting, the referral source, it'll say website. I'm like, the website is not the <laughs> referral source. So we start, once we start breaking it down. Uh, yeah, you know. it's, it's, un, it's unknown. It's, it's, yeah, it's, seriously, unknown. it's unknown. Yeah, that that yeah. is, if somebody fills out your website contact form, the source is unknown. Yes. <laughs> How did they get there? <laughs> and it's amazing because when I, we start looking at it, the average client referral source is 23%. And I, I, I am a percentage person. Um, I love to manipulate data and rip it apart till I can get it as precise as possible. So when I point that out to people, if client referrals, 23%, referrals coming in from referral sources, a way above 50%. And I say to them, so the next time you tell yourself that you're not going to send out that newsletter, you're not going to send out that blog or social media is not working, baloney. Like this, your, your referral source might not say social media posts from last Tuesday, but <laughs> look at your client referral source, you know, right. your percentage there. It's correlation. Yes. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's so, you know, and, and, and so what we do talk about, you know, going back to that whole top of the funnel versus middle of the funnel, the, the metric for most middle of the funnel is, is actually looking at the top of the, is, is looking at the other marketing. So, so in other words, to put that a different way, the right 
kind of branding, middle of the funnel conversion marketing that we've been talking about, what that does is it improves the ROI of your other marketing efforts. So to give like a really simple example of that, uh, most lawyers don't unfortunately track the ROI of the time they spend networking and they should. But like if you did, if you go to a networking event and you get, you know, 20 business cards, um, some, 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 you know, you have 20 new people on 20 new contacts, something may or may not come from that. Right. But you can, you can easily measure the ROI of that networking event by what happens with those 20 people. But if those 20 people also get added to an email newsletter that goes out automatically every month and keeps you top of mind with those people, if those people also got your business card and are directed to a website that really kind of impresses them when they get there and makes you more memorable, um, and if you have social media content that those people now might see once in a while when they're on their own social media accounts, obviously, it's easy to understand how those things could improve what happens with those 20 business cards over time. But the ROI is attributed to the networking event because that's where those 20 people came from, right? Wow. Um, and it, even, even if we're not talking about a networking event, fine, Google ads, right? 10, you know, 10 people visit your website, a, you know, a couple fill out your contact form, a couple sign up for your newsletter. Um, but you know, now those people are exposed to your website, exposed to your social media, exposed to your email newsletter, you know? Um, and, and so you hit the nail on the head. It's correlation. And look, I, I deal with it all the time. I mean, I just, we just recently started doing a print newsletter again, and I'm spending over a thousand dollars a month saying that out. And believe me, like, I, I wish there was a better way to understand the ROI on it, but, but, um, there's not directly, you know, there's like little things you can do here and there, but like have a call to action in the newsletter. But, you know, that's not the only form of ROI that comes from a newsletter. Just somebody getting that every month might be the reason that that finally pushes them to call me, but they're not going to tell me that. Like, they're not even going to know that. That goes to your point about 12 touch points before somebody takes action. You know, it isn't like that person reaches out to you and says, Hey, that, that 12 touch point was the newsletter. And, that's why I called you. Like that would be great because then you could really understand what moved them along. But uh, it just doesn't work that way. Right. And what I love about that is your, it's part of your strategy. It's part of your holistic plan. And you're not sitting there staring at the phone, staring at your email saying, all right, I better get a return on investment of this $1,000 a month. You're just knowing it's a piece of the strategy, not expecting that they are going to fully call and say, it was the I just opened up the mail and I had to call you. It was this newsletter that finally pushed me over the edge. But you, you're, you're willing to, I don't want to say risk, but you're willing to invest that money and let go and know that it's part of the entire strategy. Well, and here's where it becomes really easy to do that is when you, was when you begin to understand what's really going on. So I mentioned earlier that, you know, there's a lot of missed referrals that most law firms don't realize. And so the actual data on that, uh, it's in a study I, I quoted a lot on other podcasts and, and stuff that we've done, is uh, it was a study done by Texas Tech School of Business, and they found that um, most law firms are only getting about one third of the referrals uh, that people are willing to give them from their existing network, one third. And I think the reason that, that most lawyers have a hard time realizing this is an issue because here here's the fallacy that exists and if there's anything i want your audience to remember it might even be this over some of the stuff we talked about just because the majority of your business comes from referrals does not mean you're doing a good job at referrals right this this goes back to just like basic math principle just because you have the majority of something doesn't mean you're doing well there if you got 10 clients this whole year and seven of them were from referrals, does that mean you're doing good in referrals? You got seven this year, <laughs> you know? Um, it's like, it's so, so I think that's part of the problem is they look at their, they look at kind of their diversification of where their business comes from and they say, ah, man, 70% of my business comes from referrals. So I need to do other things. <laughs> you know, no, um, more, more than likely, unless you're doing all the things that we talked about, more than likely you could double or triple those referrals. If you actually did a better job staying in touch with your network, reinforcing your brand, reinforcing what you do. Um, 
you know, and, and, and so I just think that's one of the biggest things we want to correct, you know, is, is there's so much more business to be had from the things you're already doing, from the network you already have, you know, so invest in that um, and make sure that you, you plug up what are basically these leaky holes in your ship that you don't know about. And then when you go out and spend money on Google ads or, or any other top of funnel stuff, you now know you have this foundation where you're maximizing the returns on everything you're doing because you have the newsletters or the social media or the content that, you know, make sure that no one slips through the cracks. And so it's just, it's actually not complicated, right? When we talk about it, it's just, it's sometimes we just don't step back and kind of connect the dots and realize that. And part of it goes back to the beginning of our conversation. Part of it, to be very honest, is because, you know, a lot of the marketers out there aren't preaching this message and they're, they're, the ones to blame, in my opinion, because they're doing a disservice, mm. you know, whether it's dishonesty or they just are drinking their own Kool-Aid. I don't know, but, you know, uh, it blows my mind when a company does SEO or pay-per-click ads for a business that has a terrible website. Wow. You just you know, really or, shifted yeah. a lot of things for me, this whole better way of legal marketing, because uh, I, I, even, I hear people, I've been blogging for years, I've been blogging for years, what's the point, what's the point, not getting any leads, what, creating a newsletter, whatever. And what I love about this is it's almost like begin with the end in mind. Now, when you put that top layer on there, the top of the funnel where you are investing in SEO, et cetera. You have all these pieces in place. So those 12 touches, yeah. those 20 touches are, you don't have to, you get the lead and you follow up with them. They may or may not move forward, but you have all of this other groundwork that's in place that is going to consistently churn and nurture these leads and do all of that um, relationship building and reputation and branding for you. So it's it, what I love about it is I think other companies that are just selling the, the, the quick fix, if you will, the immediate lead generation to your point, that's great. And you're not saying don't ever do that, but you have to have your foundation built because even if that lead comes in and great, you get 70 leads in seven days, whatever happens, that's, they're going to turn cold very, very quickly unless you are, and you're not going to call them hourly because then they're going to go away or call them daily, but they're going to, they're going to drop off. So it's great that you got 70 leads, for example, but what happens 24 hours after that? What happens a month after that, six months after that, that 12, 20 touches? And I love what you're saying because it's not an either or. It can be an and when you have the revenue to be able to throw it at, at, at Google AdWords or Facebook ads or to your point, a direct mail newsletter, hard paper newsletter. You, don't, you still need this stuff in place from a place of nurturing and relationship and reputation. Right. And, 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 and that's where it all comes for a circle. That is the better way. And then again, that, that's what fuels how you blog, mm. how you do your newsletter, how you do your website. And that's where, you know, that's where understanding, you know, that, that, that's why this podcast is all about them not being created equal. Because if you don't really, if you don't understand how it all connects and your marketing providers don't understand how it all connects, or they just believe differently than what we talked about in this podcast, then you're, 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 you know, you've got leaky holes in your boat, <laughs> yes. kind of, you know, and, and, uh, and it's unfortunate because you're spending time and or money either networking or on marketing and advertising. And you're, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, I mean, some, there's so many cool things that we didn't even get a chance to talk about. I know we got to wrap up here in a yeah. minute, but it's not only, it's not only that you might, um, hopefully get more clients, um, but, you know, sometimes the value of doing all of this is that you can actually raise your rates. Um, you know, you actually can command the, the rates that you really want to be charging because when you, when you kind of elevate your own brand and reputation and you nurture your audience, um, they want to work with you. They want to refer to you, you know, and, and, uh, and that's another form of ROI is raising your rates. Oh, See, wow. Seeing if your marketing can actually help you, you know, charge more. 
You know, we don't all always want more clients. Some of us just want better and higher paying clients, you know? <laughs> so it, yeah, it, it really, uh, it really does, uh, you know, you know, come full circle. And, uh, and I really encourage people to check out that resource that I mentioned, the anti SEO report, because it, it doesn't just inform on some, again, some of the downsides of SEO, um, but it, it talks about some of this and then it talks about some of the, uh, you know, we literally have a, a section at the end there that gives you 10 very specific things you can go do instead of worrying about search ends. And so again, if anyone wants that, um, just check out spotlightbranding.com slash Molly. And, um, and uh, I'd love to, love to know what they think of it as well. Absolutely. Thank you. And we'll have the link here at the bottom of the show notes in addition to how to stay connected with Mark and Spotlight Branding and all their social channels and their website. So I highly recommend that you go and download that free resource. I know I'll be doing that as soon as we end today's podcast. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for sharing about a better way to market your law practice. I know I learned a lot and it really just confirmed the value and being, I loved what you said, just be a resource. That's just, it's such a value bomb right there. Yeah, it was great to be here. I I hope that, um, I hope everyone out there uh, finds it helpful. Yes, indeed. And please leave some comments below for us in regards to your takeaway from the anti-SEO report.